Alrighty, alrighty. So part two to beginning airbrushing, right? And in, in, in miniature painting. So uh, like I said before, if you recall, if you've seen the other video, if you haven't, uh, go to my uh, channel and see part one. Uh, this right here, which is my kind of uh, big flow job, it gets a lot of a lot of paint out there. One says it's a point two, and this one doesn't say anything, at least not on it. The every single airbrush is associated with some sort of measurement, usually a point something. At least I think in all cases a point something. So 0 0.5, 0 0.35, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, and 0 0.1. Those are the common ones I know. That refers to the size in millimeters of the opening or the needle. One of the two. This right here is a 0.35, and it is, it, you know, again, it's not ultra fine detail, but it's it's good for what I need to do. This is a 0.2, so it would make you think this right here is more detail oriented than that, but it's not. This right here, if it's 0.2, I don't know what 0.2 planet it comes from, but it's very high um, uh, flow of paint. Again, I got this because it was 15 bucks off of eBay, and I needed. Uh, I was going to try a second airbrush um, from from this one right here. Okay, so they're not all the same. So if you get an airbrush, you need to try and get one from a reputable brand that you can trust. Uh, that they know all the different things about. You know, they know what sizes really are. Anyway, you're going to get an honest deal. That's what I'm trying to say here. This right here again was about 40 bucks. Okay, so a lot of Badger, Pache, you can search on the internet for your favorite one, whatever there's out there. Get your first airbrush from a reputable brand, but don't go real high end. Again, 40 bucks, get something pretty basic to start off with. A lot of guys will tell you that your proficiency with an airbrush is a lot more important than the airbrush you have. And I think that's true up to a point. There are certain things you can do with a better airbrush than you can with a crappy one. So again, I really recommend at least a 0.35 uh, when you're starting out, especially if you're doing miniature painting, because doing stuff like this right here, and again, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of fine detail with the airbrush, but to get some of that stuff, you need a little bit of uh, detail-oriented um, ability with your airbrush, which means you have to be able to have a nice, thin uh, stream of paint that goes off. Okay? So uh, what are the parts of an airbrush? Um, I mean, you could really look at other videos how to take it off. But when it really comes down to it, what do you really need to know? Okay, there are two things, in my opinion, you really need to know. Three things you really need to know. A, what is the system by which it delivers the paint through the nozzle? Is it needle or is it nozzle? If you have a needle like this that comes right out, okay, these things right here are quite fragile on the tip. The tip is quite fragile. When that tip bends, you start running into issues. Um, the reason is because uh, essentially what happens, if you, if you could uh, if you could imagine, I'll use this as a blowed up type of version of it. Uh, pretend this is the needle. It's inside of a tube, okay? Essentially inside of a tube. Air goes out, and as air goes, it follows the contour of the needle and then goes out. When you push the airbrush um, action, it starts to spray paint. What it really does is it releases a... Uh, a valve in there which paint can be pulled by nature of the um, surface tension of the acrylic or whatever paint you're using basically the suction that's created by the air flowing over this needle pulls the paint out and then as it goes down it follows this contour so that it obviously is a needle it's going to hit a point what happens to the needles is they bend and when the end bends either this way or this way it basically makes a very sloppy spray. It's not very contoured, so as it goes out, the paint's going over the needle. It hits this basically rough, turbulent spot, and then it all goes to hell and it goes all over the place. So when you bend a needle, you can still use the airbrush, but you have to be aware that if you bend a needle, you're not going to have that fine of a spray anymore, and your uh, accuracy, I guess you could say, is going to go down. You can replace needles, but again, you need to be able to get to a needle in the area, so you need to have the ability to buy other needles. Okay, um, there's your physics lesson for today. Sorry about that. Um, the other thing you're going to need to know, other than the size of it, is um, if it's single action, dual action. You want to get dual action always. What dual action means, and I will show this. Whoa, focus there, buddy. Um, when you press down, a valve goes down through here, and there are different mechanisms on the inside of how it works, but the valve goes down and presses in here, and the air hose is right here, right? Presses down and releases air. So pressing down 
starts the airflow. And then pulling back essentially moves the needle this way and thereby starts to open up the nozzle or the face on the end where the needle pokes out and paint goes through. So essentially when you push down, air goes out. If you press down very slight, a little bit of air will go out. If you press down all the way, the entire PSI that you have your compressor set to will go out. There's not usually a lot of difference in how much you press down. It's kind of like a little tiny bit and the floodgates are open. That really doesn't matter because your PS, PSI set right, the only thing that really matters is how far you pull it back. And you see this right here has a quite a big range. You know, ranging from 0% all the way up to 100% of the maximum flow that this thing could put out. So, um, you know, pulling back just a tiny little bit allows you to get a tiny little bit of paint out. The moral to the story is only get a two-stage or a double-action airbrush. Single action is you push down. There's only one thing. You push down, and it both sends air and paint out at the same time. You don't want them. So double action. Okay. I think most airbrushes are kind of double action nowadays. But if you are buying it off of eBay and it's cheap, you might want to check just to make sure it's double action. Uh, the next thing is, exact, is the tip here. Okay. Uh, you can kind of go into what's the cup like. Uh, the reservoir right here, sometimes there's big ones, sometimes there's small ones, sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. In any case, uh, as you can probably see in there, maybe, maybe not, the needle is right inside of the base, obviously. Um, you do be kind of be aware of that sometimes it makes it difficult to clean if you have uh, a cup that doesn't come off. Not really a big deal because usually the ones that don't come off, um, like our, our cheap friend over here, it's very large and the reservoir is very, very big in there and it's pretty easy to clean. So having a cup or not having a cup isn't, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, the other thing you really need to know is how is the tip of it? And every single brand has a different one. I really want to get a badger or the badger type of one. It's like because the needle uh, guard that's right here on, on, the, on the end, okay, when you take this piece off, it's probably very difficult to see, but the needle sticks out right here, okay? The guard's on here, obviously, so that um, you don't hit this, you know, you don't jam it into the ground or whatever, you know, on, on your board and it bends it. That's what the guard's there for, and mine's very dirty. The issue with it is it creates a different dynamic in the airflow when it's cupped off like this. So um, there is a turbulence value that is associated to having um, basically air that's accumulated here. So when the air comes through of this part and it goes through, it creates like a little mini vortex inside this cup because there is no free flowing air. As air gets pulled, it kind of sticks to one another and that means air has to go into the cup and go out and creates this like little current, so to speak. You know, the, it actually works far better with this when you take this off, of course, than the danger is that you might hit it on something. The Badger and a few other companies make, instead of a, a full cup like this, basically a guard, and the guard is maybe three or four pronged so that you can actually see the tip um, and it gets proper airflow. The other thing is, is that when these things start to clog and jam, they usually start actually on the tip of the needle. So usually just wiping the tip of the needle very carefully with a soft rag will usually keep a lot of headaches away from you. So that right there is basically what you need to know about the airbrush itself. Um, we'll come back, we'll go over the compressor and some of the other uh, ancillary items real quick. And uh, then we're going to get to actually how to use the damn thing. All right. Mm -hmm.